Our producer met her at a coffee shop, saying she wants to know what happened to Matthew, the 10-year-old boy in this photo. It's so terrible. After staring at his photo, she uses a special pendulum, claiming it allows her to talk with the dead. They're saying he's not alive anymore. And then she claims she is connected directly with Matthew. Well, he's wearing white. <laughs> but is he? Because we're pretty sure Matthew, the boy in this photo, is not wearing white or in heaven. In fact, we know he's wearing black and is alive because you're looking at him sitting in the booth right behind her. Yep. That boy is indeed in the opposite of heaven. He's in a Denny's. But, but wait, wait till you see exactly how they bust her because it is just perfect. I'm Curtis Mink from Channel 13. How are you? I'm fine. Showing her the picture of Matthew, she tells me she thinks he was taken. I understand you said you thought he was deceased. Yes, I believe he could be. I've got news for you. It might come as a shock, but he's very much alive. Oh, that's great. And he's actually standing right behind you right now. Oh, that's great. That's great. It is great. It is great. It's utter perfection. The only way that could have been any better is if the first thing that kid said to her was, Hey, Mom. And, and I would argue that that is the only responsible way to put a psychic on television, humiliating them with a ghost boy in a Denny's parking lot. Because this surprisingly large, often predatory industry relies on popular culture to lend it credence and validity. To put it another way, every time a psychic makes a grieving widow cry on Dr. Oz, ten con artists get their wings. And that is a problem, because there will always be people who feel an urge to reach out to psychics in their time of need. So if you, or someone you know, is one of them, I may have a small way to help here. Sadly, this isn't really the best format for me to show you, so please, join me on the set of my new daytime talk show instead. Welcome back to Wakey Wakey with John Oliver. It's sometime between nine and three in the afternoon. And, and <laughs> My next guest is a Staten Island psychic and author of the book, These Freaking Spirits, let me tell you. Please welcome Wanda Jo Oliver. Thank you. Thank you for having me, John. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Now, Wanda, if you look familiar to some viewers, it might be because you're also my beloved wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm his freaking angel. She is. She is. Now, quick question, Wanda Jo. What happened to your accent? Aren't you from the South? Uh, I'm not from there anymore. That makes sense. Now, Wanda, when did you first realize that you had incredible psychic abilities? Oh, well, it was right after I saw a thing on TV about how much money psychics can make, and suddenly I was like, oh, me too! <laughs> Hashtag me too! Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not, that, that, that's actually a different thing. Hashtag me too. Anyway, that's when I realized I had to share my gift with the world. Now, Wanda Jo, I understand that you've graciously offered to give our viewers psychic readings for free, is that mm -hmm. right? Bingo, bango. Mm -hmm. Um, as part of a court-ordered settlement, I've been forced to set up a website, WandaJoTheFreePsychic.com. <laughs> just log on now and you can get a freeing from me, Wanda Jo, just like this. Okay, they want me to acknowledge an M connection. That could mean Mark or Mary or, or Megan. It could be someone who's passed or still alive. It also doesn't have to be a name. It could be any word that starts with M or has an M somewhere in it. Maybe, maybe a museum or a hamper. It, it could be an upside down M like a W or a sideways M like a three or an E. Anyway, that person, he or she wants me to tell you that the time you had together was really special to him or her. Wow. That is phenomenal to me. And it almost seems weird to be doing this as a promo right now because Wanda gave me a reading yesterday and it was so much more important to me than a promo. I cried all the way home. Yeah. I told him none of his dead relatives wanted to talk to him. <laughs> that's, that's so them. The point is, go to Wanda Joe the Free Psychic or mediumimpressive.com and get a free psychic reading. We promise it will be exactly as accurate as any psychic reading that you would pay money for. Wait, I'm getting a voice through for someone at home. Hold on. Your grandmother's a bitch. Wow. Okay, that's our show. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week. Good night. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with the spirit. If they, if they say bitch, it's a bitch. It's a bitch. It's a bitch. It's a bitch. And we will have a national emergency, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there. 
and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. You know, yet another great reason for Trump to not be president is that I now kind of want to see him as a historical expert on the next Ken Burns miniseries. They killed the Archduke, and Germany got mad, and then there were tanks, and also poison gas, and there was a beagle on a doghouse flying around shooting at people, and then America won. Look. Welcome to Last Week Tonight. Uh, I'm John Oliver. Thank you for being with us. Uh, let's start this evening with a quick recap of the week, uh, beginning with Japan, Earth's pervert uncle, which <laughs> this week announced a major policy shift. And in Japan, the government has changed its pacifist military policy for the first time in more than 70 years. It will now be able to use military force to defend other nations. Wow, that, that is a major shift. But I think the bigger news here is that apparently Japan has had a policy of pacifism for nearly 70 years. <laughs> Suddenly, all the repressed anger in their cartoons makes a lot more sense. Oh. Okay, uh, we still can't fight any wars? Fine. Uh, here's another cartoon of a schoolgirl covered in blood. <laughs> in fact, many Japanese citizens were extremely angry about this policy shift, taking to the streets in protest, waving signs depicting their prime minister as Hitler. And I tell you who I feel sorry for there, Tojo. He must have been going, oh, come on! You needed a mustachioed World War II war criminal at a Japanese protest, and you go with Adolf? I attacked Pearl Harbor! What do I have to do to be a shorthand for evil? It's not fair! I earned it! In, in this atmosphere, the Japanese military may struggle to attract recruits, were it not for a secret weapon. A recruitment video featuring one of the members of the Japanese pop group, AKB48. And, by the way, a fun fact about AKB48, they have over 100 members. Uh, there is the cute one, the quiet one, the funny one, the smart one, the 16 giggly ones, the two comatose ones, uh, the glass eye one, the one no one likes, the 23 sassy ones, and the 62-year-old man posing as a 19-year-old girl one. He's my favourite. He's my favourite. And before you make fun of this probably not being effective, just wait until you see how catchy their songs are. That's a catchy song. That is a catchy song. Um, stumbled across a propaganda video produced by the Thai government designed to teach the core values of Thai society. Just keep an eye out for what one child is painting. Yes, that is a child applauding their friend's Hitler painting. <laughs> Which is obviously offensive. You don't applaud art when you like it. You nod thoughtfully and drink your weight in complimentary gallery shards and <laughs> now, now, we naturally assumed that this was just a one-off aberration, but it turns out Thailand has something of a bizarre fixation with Hitler imagery. Thailand's biggest university apologizing today for a controversial mural. Take a look at the artwork. It's depicting Adolf Hitler and a group of superheroes. A Christian school in Thailand now apologizing for allowing students to march in a Nazi-themed parade. The Hitler chicken uh -huh. restaurant is using an image of the Nazi leader on an emblem similar to KFC. KFC calls it extremely distasteful. That's right. KFC, the makers of the chicken scraps and potato melange you drink from a cup, <laughs> called something extremely distasteful and were not being hypocritical. <laughs> now, to be fair, in Thai schools, world history is not given much attention with little or no mention of the Holocaust. Although, to be even fairer, come on! <laughs> How is it appropriate to use Hitler on a billboard to advertise a wax museum or to advertise a herbal laxative tea with Hitler proclaiming, release the demon? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense, Thailand. If you had Hitler screaming at you to take a shit, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't need a fucking laxative. <laughs> We haven't even got into the clothing available in Thailand yet. You can buy t-shirts featuring panda Hitlers and Teletubby Hitlers. <laughs> Who is that 
last one for? <laughs> there are two types of people who would wear Hitler Teletubby clothing. The type that wants a Teletubby shirt so badly they'll take one with Hitler on it, and the type who wants a Hitler shirt so badly they'll take one with a Teletubby on it, and I'm not sure who the worst person is there. <laughs> But the greatest example of just how comfortable Thailand is with Hitler imagery is the fact that a Thai band called Slur once produced this video. That is misjudged just from a marketing standpoint. How are teenage girls supposed to pick a favourite boy band member if all of them are the bad boy? Look, Thailand, you need to understand the only acceptable depictions of Hitler are either in a history textbook or accidentally on a dog's face. That's the only time. <laughs> Who's a bad boy? You are. You're a very bad boy. But to embrace the actual Hitler is a real problem. He was terrible. Google Hitler right now, Thailand, and see what comes up. Seriously, do it now. We will all wait. Yes, exactly, Thailand. He was really bad. Look, this has to stop. Because if you need a charismatic personality with a funny moustache to worship, there are other options. In fact, there's a perfect option. And I'm talking about beloved comedian and TV personality, Rip Taylor. He's got everything you're looking for, Thailand. Funny moustache? Check. Colourful outfits? Big check. What about a flair for pageantry? Rip Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's no Nuremberg rally, but come on, it's pretty close. And the beauty is, Rip Taylor is more than willing to be the new face of whatever you want in Thailand. Uh, don't take my word for it. Tell them, Rip. Thailand, I would love to be your substitute Hitler. I would love to be your substitute Hitler. Put Rip Taylor on whatever you want. Murals and, and walls and T-shirts and chicken restaurants and dress up your boy bands as me. Seriously. <laughs> come on, do it. Don't just sit there and do it. See? He'll do it. And guess what? Rip Taylor, Rip Taylor has never killed six million Jews. Tell them, Rip. Rip's never killed a single Jew. Not a single one. Seriously. No Jews. Never. Never. It's not, it's not my nature. School. If Pink Floyd had gone to one, they'd have known it's we don't need any education. You undermined your point. Now, it is, it's currently back to school season, and for millions, the school they'll be attending will be a charter school. The things the politicians love to praise. I called for a doubling of our investment in charter schools. I'm a big believer in charter schools. I believe in public charter schools. Charter schools work, and they work very well. Charter schools are so successful that almost every politician can find something good to say about them. Yes, charter schools unite both sides of the aisle more quickly than when a wedding DJ throws on Hey Ya. Oh, look at Nana dancing. We can never let her know what this song is about. <laughs> Charters are basically public schools that are taxpayer funded but privately run. And now the first ones emerged 25 years ago as places to experiment with new educational approaches. And since then they've exploded. There are now over 6,700 charter schools educating almost 3 million students. And some have celebrity backers like Puff Daddy, Andre Agassi and even Pitbull who helped, helped launch Miami's Slam Academy. He was a keynote speaker at a charter school conference in 2013 and his speech has not aged well for reasons that will become painfully clear. They told me that... Uh... Bill Cosby has spoken here before, which I think is amazing. Someone that I really relate to. I also love Jello, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, that does look bad now. But to be fair, it was not commonly known at the time that Jello was responsible for dozens of cases of sexual assault. <laughs> Turns out Jello is a monster. I think I'm legally okay to say that. The point is, f Jello. And, and look, when Pitbull has a charter school, it seems like it might be worth taking a look at them. And first, let me acknowledge, this is a controversial area. Charter proponents will point to positive news stories like this one about the KIPP Charter Schools Network. Most KIPP students are chosen by lottery, regardless of prior academic record. Almost all meet federal poverty guidelines. And yet 82% go on to college. I think one thing that I learned at KIPP really well is that a lot of your effort doesn't reap any 
um, success until way later in the future. Now, honestly, any philosophy that can get those kind of results might be worth considering. In the same way that if we found out they boosted our immunity, we'd seriously consider eating koalas. <laughs> but, but critics, critics argue charters overstate their successes, siphon off talented students, and divert precious resources within the school districts. Now, for this piece, and I know this is going to make some people on both sides very angry, we're going to set aside whether or not charter schools are a good idea in principle. Because whether they are or not, in 42 states in D.C., we're doing them. So instead, we're going to look at how they operate in practice. One group found, on average, charters had a slight edge over traditional public schools in reading and did about the same in math, but acknowledged charter quality is uneven across the states and across schools. And that is putting it mildly. Because around the country, there have been charter schools so flawed, they don't make it through the school year. This charter school suddenly closed its doors in the middle of the day. An Orange County charter school suddenly closed its doors without notice. The local charter school is suddenly and unexpectedly closing its doors. On our dining room table, my son left these two notes to us. One says, Dear Mom, is the school going out of business? Yes, yes, you are right. That kid spelled business, biznos, which I'd argue is a much better way to spell it. Now, now that, that school was actually shut down just six weeks into the school year, so to be honest, they probably should have been much better at biznos. <laughs> and, and charters in some states can have an alarming failure rate. Two years ago, a Florida paper found that since 2008, 119 charter schools had closed there, 14 of which had never even finished their first school year. So 14 schools in Florida were outlasted by NBC's Mysteries of Laura, <laughs> a show which once ended an episode like this. I have a hot date tonight. With who? Threesome, actually. That's a threesome joke about her f***ing children! It was in the first season and they gave her another one! Now, as it happens, the judge he initially insulted is overseeing cases involving the controversial Trump University, and he ordered a cache of documents to be released this week, which was very exciting to us, because we actually looked into his university when we did our big piece on Trump back in February, and it wound up on this very long list of awful Donald Trump stories that we literally didn't have time to delve into, even in a 22-minute piece. But... Once we started reading through these new documents, we figured, oh, fuck it, let's take some time to talk about it now. <laughs> because Trump University is kind of amazing. Back when it opened, Trump made some big claims. At Trump University, we teach success. That's what it's all about, success. It's going to happen to you if you don't learn from the people that we're going to be putting forward. And these are all people that are hand-picked by me. Then uh, you're just not going to make it in terms of the world of success. <laughs> the world of success. It, it sounds like what Donald Trump calls his bedroom. Welcome to the world of success. Please enjoy a mint and a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Trump University ran into problems in several states, starting with the name itself. We started looking at Trump University and uh, discovered that it was a classic bait-and-switch scheme. It was a scam, starting with the fact that it was not a university. Holy shit! Trump University wasn't even a university. Which is enough to make you wonder, what the fuck was in Trump stakes? Oh god, it was possum, wasn't it? It was possum, you monsters! <laughs> but the name was just the beginning. Because remember how he had hand-picked instructors? Well, according to his own depositions, he did not personally select instructors for live seminars and was unable to recall the names of key faculty members. And it's probably good that he didn't hand-pick them himself. That would be dangerous. Anything Trump's tiny fingers touch <laughs> turn into an ex-wife or an abandoned casino. And, and it doesn't stop there. According to the sworn testimony by several former employees, many instructors and mentors had no experience by or selling real estate. In fact, one had worked as a salesman for Lowe's and another had been manager for Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> or as I call it, B-dubs dubs. <laughs> and, and even a former member of Trump's own sales staff testified that it was, among other things, a joke, a facade, and was just selling false hopes and lies. And to be fair, Every university has sold some of its students false hopes and lies. It's just most of the time they call it a theatre arts degree. <laughs> now, 
These, these new documents also include several revealing playbooks of sales tactics. For instance, the room temperature was to be no more than 68 degrees, which is partly to keep students alert, and partly because Professor Wild Wings doesn't want the ranch sauce getting all gamey. <laughs> there are also instructions on how to sell and upsell students, or as the playbooks call them, buyers, on expensive courses with typo riddle tips like if a client is adamant about knowing the price simply say our course range anywhere from twenty nine dollars to thirty five thousand dollars and if prospects seemed at all wary there was advice for dealing with that you must be very aggressive one passage from the playbook reads if they complain about the price remind them that trump is the best <laughs> You might laugh, but that is the same technique that Trump has been using to run for president, and apparently it fucking works. <laughs> These playbooks are rife with sleazy salesmanship. For instance, employees were told to substitute the words thank you with congratulations so that the potential customer ends up thanking you, which is pretty obnoxious. If I started this show every week with welcome to last week tonight, congratulations on joining us, you would quite rightly turn it off. And I know what you're thinking. Well, what about people who simply didn't have the money? Trump, you didn't really have a problem with that. A set of playbooks for the sales team coached them on how to market the courses even to single mothers with three children who, quote, may need money for food. Money, instructed the playbook, is never a reason for not enrolling in Trump University. If they really believe in you and your product, they will find the money. You are not doing any favor by letting someone use lack of money as an excuse. Lack of money is not an excuse, is not what single parents need to hear. It's what Donald Trump needs to hear when a fifth company of his inevitably files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And as you might expect, some of the customers on the other end of that hard sell wound up feeling duped, like Carmen Mendez, who put a $35,000 course on her credit cards and was left disappointed. there, Internet. Uh, I'm John Oliver, host of Last Week Tonight, except this week I have been relegated to YouTube, like some kind of piano-playing cat. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate and respond to some of the fan mail that we have received. It's not literal mail, of course, because I host a television show in 2014, not a farmer's almanac from 1842. So, so I will be replying to several comments from the Last Week Tonight YouTube page. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, for instance, we did a story on America's nuclear arsenal, and the discourse it set off was, mm -hmm. let, let, let's just say it was full of words. Uh, <laughs> a, a YouTube user actually wrote, uh, and this is very touching, I don't even understand why the audience is laughing, <laughs> which, which I hope was a comment on the seriousness of the subject matter, and not a referendum on the comedy contained. <laughs> Either way, it cannot possibly be more hurtful to the comment on the same video reading, John Oliver's face does look like a parrot. <laughs> now, there's a lot to feel uncomfortable about there, but primarily there's the word does. <laughs> like he's agreeing with someone. Uh, yes. Good point. That man's face is rather parrot-like. Why isn't this TV show more about wanting crackers? It makes no sense. Make cracker jokes, parrots. Do it, parrots. Uh, m moving on, for instance, uh, more recently a viewer wrote to us regarding the practice of native advertising in the news, uh, saying, unsubscribed when the shit talk on Code Red started, when you mock the second best cherry soda, you done goofed. Now, now, listen, listen, I'd done goofed before, but, but not in a dog's age. In, in fact, the last time I'd done goofed this bad, I reckon the corn was as high as an elephant's eye. But, but if you are willing to abandon this show because I made fun of your second favourite cherry soda, then goodbye, sir. <laughs> goodbye. You shall not be missed. Anyone who has a second favourite flavour of cherry soda probably also has a second favourite smelling brand of gasoline. But, 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 but my favourite comment in recent weeks was this one from the very same video which was in Spanish and it really touched me to think that my comedy had crossed the language barrier. Finally, I thought, I truly understand what it means to live la vida loca. <laughs> Until that is, uh, I went to a Google translation page and uh, pressed translate 
and saw the message uh, was uh, Spanish for, son of a bitch, motherfucking shit like you see on TV makes me sick the world. <laughs> Which, uh, even if the translation was clunky, is certainly not a compliment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and now, finally, because we do not want to leave you on a negative note, uh, here's one, uh, one last comment from YouTube, uh, saying, This guy is brilliant. <laughs> Which, that warms my heart. Because finally, someone saw me for me. Because brilliant, brilliant is exactly what I am. I if you are mistaking me for anything, for doing anything other than... The, the, if you're mistaking me, for instance, for doing something brilliant, you, you are frankly not paying any close attention to what I'm saying. Uh, so we will be back in September, uh, uh, on the 7th of September, um, at 11pm on HBO, by which point this video will have undoubtedly amassed enough hateful vitriol for us to film a follow-up. Uh, thank you so much for watching. A special thanks to our YouTube commenters down there. You are all brilliant, every single one of you. We'll see you in September. Hello there. Today, I'd like to speak specifically to Facebook users, but before I do, I'll give you a moment to close out of your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend's profile page. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're not imagining it. They are absolutely happier than they have ever been. <laughs> so, let's, let's begin. Let's begin. Now, for the, for the last few years, variations on this privacy statement have been making the rounds on Facebook, uh, as many of you seem to believe that posting it prohibits Facebook from owning the content that you post. <laughs> Unfortunately, you might as well be posting this picture of a sloth revealing a woman's cleavage because it would grant you literally the same legal rights. You see, posting these statements is meaningless, no matter how serious their language may be. One of the more popular versions begins with the sentence, I do declare the following. Now, <laughs> let me stop you right there. And this is important. Just because you say something in the voice of a southern debutante... <laughs> does not make it legally binding. I do declare, Mr. Beauregard, that status update about last night's episode of Scandalous Man, Man alone, Man alone. I do declare, I declare it. Other versions cite the Rome Statute, a treaty that established the International Criminal Court. So, it's quite irrelevant to social media, although I will agree that posting too many pictures of your ugly baby should be a crime against humanity. But not only that, a few of the messages being shared misspell it as the Rome statue, <laughs> implying that your Facebook page is protected by Bernini's sculpture of David. <laughs> and it's not, it's not. The point is, posting that message will accomplish nothing. But that's, that's not because wall posts don't override terms of service agreements or that Facebook doesn't own your content in the first place in the way the mainstream media would have you believe. <laughs> it's because the only true way to protect your content on Facebook is by posting this video. Yes, the one that you are currently watching, starring me, John Oliver, as is clearly stated in the Social Media Profile Copyright Act of 1934. <laughs> Section 6, subsection 2E, paragraph 4. The contents of one social media profile, be it updates or status, Twitterage, Instagramming or photographs shared in a face-based book, <laughs> shall be protected if and only if one posts a video of a television personality declaring it as such. Said personality must be British man <laughs> occupying a late-night weekend time slot on pay cable, must have had w at least one booty tweet ignored by Liam from One Direction. At least one. <laughs> must, at least one, must have a lifelong paralyzing fear of starfish. Holy shit! <laughs> Just take it down! Take it down! Uh, and also must have lost his virginity at the age of 26 to the Grease 2 sound check. <laughs> check, 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 and checkity check. <laughs> So, just to be clear, I am the most powerful legal weapon available to you. Use me wisely, and then, and only then, you may get back to your ex's profile page. And you're right, their life without you is an unending parade of absolute joy and fulfilment. <laughs> Farewell, Facebook. Farewell. <laughs>